Hey, Adam Schefter's in the Comcast Business Hotline because every day in business is a big day, and Comcast Business gets you ready for what's next. And he's brought to us by our friends at Landis Block and Concrete. And they've shown it to me. They created our very own jaw-dropping backyard paradise, and you can check them out online at LandisBC.com. Adam, how much do you believe that when a team sits and their fan base sits and they watch Wild Card Weekend – that maybe too much is put into what they see with their two eyes because of a recency bias or that just their team didn't get a chance to put anything on the table for them to see? Well, you know what I think? I, I, the, the question I always have is, and it's different with every team, <clears throat> how do they come out of the bye? Like, momentum is a real thing in football. When you're rolling, you're rolling. Just like early in the year, middle of the year, the Eagles are rolling, and then – when Jalen was gone, they weren't. Are they going to be able to just recapture that magic right away on Saturday? Or is it going to take a little bit of time? And we're not going to know until we see it. And they don't know. And I've seen one seeds that come out clicking on all cylinders. And I see one seeds that just don't look like one seeds in round one. Last, just, last year, both one seeds lost. And had str yeah. and had trouble getting their offenses going, but I don't know if there that was because I don't know if that was because of the Bengals and what the Bengals and the 49ers did, or if it was because of what the Packers and the Titans did. Well, but 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 hold on, they were one seats. They were good enough to have the best record in their conferences. So I don't care what the 49ers or Bengals did. The Packers and Titans did not play the way they had all year long. Chef, do you, yeah, they didn't. No, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't on that day. That is correct. Who this weekend, Chef, in the NFC, or what this weekend in the NFC impressed you most? Uh, in the NFC, yeah, Dallas. Dallas mm. came out storming. I mean, they were unbelievable, and uh, to me, they looked like a dangerous team. When you saw. They, Though, 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 going up against like, like what, 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 what they did against Tampa, Tampa was not. Tampa was eight and nine, like you're saying there. Tampa was eight and nine for a reason. Just like one seeds are one seeds for a reason. Teams are eight and nine for a reason because they're less than mediocre. I just wonder what did we see them go against? And Minnesota got blown out three times down the stretch, and then had to face the you know go goes up against the Giants. And everybody's thinking, wow, look what the Giants did to Minnesota. I saw Detroit do that to Minnesota. I saw I saw the, the Packers do it to Minnesota. I saw Dallas do it to Minnesota in the last six weeks. That Dallas looks dominant. Dominant. Now, are they going to come out and play that way on Sunday night? I don't know. You know, is it team that was, was Monday night – their best game of the year was the, was it the game against Minnesota. If Dallas is playing at that level and not turning over the football, they're going to be tough to beat. They're, they're going to be tough to beat. But I also would say that if the 49ers don't have any turnovers, they're going to be tough to beat. And if the Eagles don't turn, it's, it's pretty simple. Like, there are three really good teams. And the Giants, by the way, are an upstart team. I, I think they're dangerous on Saturday. I do. Are they as good as the Eagles? No, they're not. Does that mean that the Eagles are going to win the game? No. No. How much do you think the, 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 the product of how a team plays is who they're playing? Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Like you're saying, when if Dallas plays like they did against Minnesota or Dallas plays like they did against Tampa, the, they're out of the playoffs for a reason because both of those teams, you know, blew a tire and were playing like crappy down the stretch. Well, we lost you for a second there. We've lost Adam. We'll try to uh, we'll try to get him hooked up again. Put him on hold, and we'll see if we can get him back in a better cell. I think I I think that's one of the things you got to look at is when you look your best. Who did you look your best against? Yeah, but but also some of that is you're making that team look bad too. Yeah, that is too. You know, I mean, you're you're doing enough. I thought Dallas's offense, like Shefty said, I think it might have got interrupted there a little bit was just on fire the other night. They looked like they were just running on all cylinders. Well, there was some beautiful... Uh, uh, the, Dak Prescott delivered ball, the ball the other night as well as I've seen him all year long. Yeah, and the, the, his I mean, he motor was... Throwing, he was throwing bullets. Yeah, and his motor was as high as I've ever seen it. We got Adam Schefter back with us. Hey, Adam, thanks, buddy. Yeah, I, 
I'm sorry about that. I'm in a bad stuff. It's okay. What I was about to say was, you know, Monday night, Dallas did play great. But Tampa was awful. And Tampa has been awful. So to your point, yes, it does have something to do with how you're playing. And Tampa did this year, for whatever reason, has just looked miserable all along. They've never been able to get out of their own way. And so they got in the hole on Monday night, and it changes the whole game. And they're just not playing well enough to recover and bounce back from that, as you saw on Monday night. Now, uh, do I think that Dallas uh, or the Giants are going to play that way against the favorites on divisional playoff? I, I, I don't think so. You know, I, very rarely do you see a team get to this spot and just lay an egg. I, it, it happens, but it's not very common. It's not very common. I, I, I've, seen some, I've seen some bad ones. I was at a... AFC Championship game where Jacksonville beat Miami like 51-3 or whatever it was. It was unbelievable. You know, sometimes just days get away. But by and large, these games usually are competitive. And, and I, I think the Giants are going to play tough. Shefty, Daniel Jones to me this past weekend was so good, almost unrecognizable from what we've seen when the, when the Eagles have played the Giants throughout his years. Has that been growing all this season with Brian Dable, or did he play one of his best games of the season on whatever they played Sunday? Well, how about both those? Can both of them be true? Like you're building and growing and learning the offense and getting better, and then all of a sudden you play your best game at the most critical time, which is what happened on Sunday. And the guy's heading into an important offseason. His contract's up. And obviously this is his last stand. So, you know, if he plays like that again this week, Price just goes up and up and up. He's making a lot of money by playing that well. And I, I, I think Daniel Jones is just a, a, a good quarterback. And I think he's built for today's day and age. Like, he can run. Mm-hmm. He can be a runner. And people don't necessarily think of him because they see you know, this big guy out there. They don't think he's fast. He, he's all those things. He's pretty athletic. What and do you – so, yeah. Um, when, you, when you look at what uh... – Jalen Hurts being completely removed from the injury report yesterday. Did that surprise you? I think it's a symbolic gesture as much as anything else. So teams do, teams will do that. When they know a guy's going to play, they'll do that to just take him off. Do, do I think he's 100% that all of a sudden that one week he magically healed and that sprained SC joint is just good to go and there's no, no, I don't think that. So I think he's going to practice in full this week and play on Sunday, and there's no – yeah, so take him off. He's not hurt. And it sends a message to the Giants, yeah, our guy, he's better. It's not, there's, there's nothing to target there. There's nothing to see there. We're, we're going on. He's playing. He's fine. He's all good. Chef, you, you think he's all good? I find it incredibly hard to believe, yeah, especially the way they walked on eggshells the past few weeks. But I like it. And I think, obviously, it's a message also being sent by Jalen Hurts. Yep. I, okay, well, that, that, that's what they're trying to do. I like it. Chef, you talked about turnovers earlier, and, and obviously we can put that on, on playoff games especially being a deciding factor. But if you look at the talent or coaches, whatever it may be, what's the biggest difference between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New York Giants? I think the Eagles have more playmakers. They, they built up their roster to a spot where they're just they're more like the Giants are claiming Isaiah Hodgins off waivers. And Isaiah Hodgins has been unbelievable. Like, good for that guy and good for that team. Claimed him off waivers in November. The guy's killing it. Killing it. Whereas the Eagles have first-round picks at that spot. A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. You know, and, 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 and look, I lo- Isaiah Hodgins is my kind of guy. I love that guy. But you're talking about, you know, the Eagles have – Primetime guys there at those spots. Um, and the Giants have one at running back. And Jalen has been, you know, playing at an MVP level this year until he got hurt. Um, they're, they're probably stronger in the line. They just, they're just a deeper, more talented roster, which doesn't mean anything in one game, right? Like the Giants go out and play better. So, wait, 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 let me hear that, though. Sense. When I hear that from people, it doesn't mean anything? Shouldn't it mean? Doesn't it mean the 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 majority of the time the more talented team, the more stacked team wins? Usually it does, but there are cases when it doesn't. Of course, that's the case. We know that. I mean, that's that there is, but I mean, it it should mean a lot. I mean, we 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 did the exercise this morning, and we put four 
Giants from their starting lineup that could potentially start for the Eagles? I mean, it's this is Saqu- this Saqu- is pretty lopsided. Saquon, Saquon, Absolutely, Saquon. Saquon. Uh, boy, if, uh, uh, would you go? This is a hard exercise to do. You know, I'm just thinking like, but their two offensive tackles are great, but I'm, I don't know that I'm taking them over the Eagles guys like Jordan Malata and Lane John. Like, is, you know, is Lane Johnson I mean, going to be 100 percent of Lane Johnson? I don't know. We'll see. I'm yeah, I don't think there's that, a right? unit. Like, I don't think there's a unit where they're better. Every single unit right. the Eagles are better. It doesn't mean you can't lose a game, but in all logic, the better team. The the Eagles started out yeah. seven and zero. Oh. The uh, Giants started out six and one. From that point on, the Giants were three six and one. The Eagles were seven and three I, I, with two losses with Jalen Hurts out of the lineup. What, and uh, what does that mean on the scoreboard at the start of Saturday? Well, I mean, it's it's zero zero, but it also tells you predict. Okay. Like it also tells you going in though, there has to be some basis of logic, correct? As far as wh- how you look at the two teams. And that is why the game is in Philadelphia, and that is why the Eagles are the one seed. And that is why the Eagles are favored, and that is why they're going to go play the game. That is why Saturday night you're going to text me and you're going to say, wow, it was a double-digit win for the Eagles, John. Okay. Double digits, 10 10 or above. (laughs) I'm I'm going to say, what's what's the point spread in the game? It's seven and a half. That's about what I would think it would be. Yeah. I I think Philadelphia wins the game. Would you take the points? And now you're not a gambler. You're not a gambling guy. You're not advocating gambling, nope. but you're thinking: nope. Does it fall nope. within? Do you, would you believe it would be uh, uh, fall within that? Yes. Okay. I do. Okay. We're going to see you on a Thursday. Tell me: Are we looking for two new coordinators? One new coordinator? What is your gut instinct here, and what you're hearing about the Eagles guys being interviewed? Uh. You know, I really thought Ben Johnson was going to be the guy in Carolina, and the fact that he's not, I think, puts Shane Steichen into more into play than I than I thought he was going to be. Um, but I'm going to say that at least one, at least one, and probably both. If I had a guess, is a guess, at least one, and maybe both coordinators are back in Philadelphia. Uh, are both back. Boy, that would uh, that be some people would be upset with that. Some people would be thrilled with it. I'll be thrilled with it no. if they're both back. That'd I think awesome. at least one, and, and 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 very possibly both. But we'll, look, you know, we haven't seen a head coach hire yet. There's still interviews going on. Still early in the process. Nobody knows how it's going to turn out yet. Have to see. But I'm giving you my early forecast. We'll we, see. We appreciate you, Adam. We'll look forward to checking into you next week uh, before the NFC title game. Guys, good luck on Saturday. <laughs> All right, buddy. See you later. Thanks, Shefty. Adam Schefter joined us on the Comcast Business Hotline. Thanks to our friends at Landis Block and Concord.